Yes, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dele Momodu, and I'm reaching you live from Lagos, Nigeria, the heart of Africa. Uh, let me apologize that I've been away for some time, but as you would uh, perfectly understand, I turned 60 last week, Saturday, and it's been a roller coaster. We have been in the mood of celebration. So I deserve to celebrate at 60. But tonight, I am back. And I'll be speaking. I'll be joined by a great politician, a leader from Lagos State. Uh, and I'm talking of no other than the right Honorable Mudashiru Ajayi Obasa. Uh, as you know, the Speaker of Lagos State is a very, very powerful and influential. Lagos, as I said, is the heart of Africa. So to be a speaker in the heart of Africa must be a big deal. So tonight, I'm happy to be joined by the big man. We've been trying to get him for some time. And by popular demand, a lot of people requested that they believe there is no one I cannot get on this program. And here we are finally, the right honorable has agreed to speak to me on Instagram Live. Yes, I'm expected to be joined very soon by the right honorable Mudashiru Obasa. Yes, I'm looking for his handle now. I'm sure he will be here any second from now. I can see Aki Esho. I can see Henry the Great from New York. Yes, this is a global platform. I'm seeing a lot of my friends, a lot of our regular, regular viewers. Yes, I've seen Dr. Baba all the way from Kano. How is Kano this evening? It's always good to see my regular friends. I can see, yes, so many people, so many people. It promises to be a very interesting conversation. I can see aristocrats luxury. I believe that is Mr. Nonuga. Once again, thank you for the lovely shoes you sent. Oh my God. Uh, they, they are so beautiful and I'm hoping that one of these days I will be able to retaliate. Thank you so much. Yes, I can see so many people online already. Wow. You see, when you are speaking to a big man, you must expect to see a big audience. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. If the right honorable Obasa can see me, all you need to do is press Dele Momodu live. I will see you here and I will let you in, sir. So, my dear friends, good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen. Please kindly confirm if you are hearing me and seeing me on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. Yes, we are applying all the platforms for the right honorable tonight. I cannot wait to have the big man online. Please relax. Have your coffee or your tea, or your fruit juices. Yes, on this show, we try to educate people. We try to entertain. There is no shaking, no shaking at all. So I hope my internet is behaving perfectly. So we're just waiting for the right honorable Mudashiro Obasa to join us. I'm sure it was ready a moment ago, so I'm hoping there is no internet connection issues. Please, if you see the handle Mudashiru Obasa, kindly alert me. It's a very easy name to remember. It's not one of those names you can forget easily. Yes, tonight I'm being joined 
by the Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly. That is an assembly of assemblies. You know, there are assemblies and there are assemblies. Anything in Lagos is big news, is big deal. Akin Eshaw, how are you? Yes, I can see a lot of people already online. Yes, we have an opportunity to speak to the speaker, the right honorable speaker of the biggest, yes, the biggest assembly probably in Africa. Uh, Lagos, as I always say, is the heart of Africa. So it's always a delight to speak to a major, major leader in Lagos. Uh, Kafi Dance, Kafi Mama, how are you? Good to see you, you know. I watch you every now and then, and your energy is simply stupendous. I wonder how you manage to get so much energy. Yes. Dr. Baba, are you still with your parents? My regards to them in Kano, and I hope you are all keeping safe. Yes, I'm waiting now to see the right Honorable Mudashiro Obasa online. If he can see me, it's quite easy. Kindly go to Dele Momodu Ovation live. Press the live, and then when you come in, you will see request. Once you press request, we are ready to go. Mm. Um, in the meantime, we may have to entertain you with music. I have been rocking myself before Saturday last week, May 16th, when I turned 60. Man proposes, but God disposes. My plan was different, but I want to thank my friends. Yes, my proteges, Ayuanima Shaun and others. They said, no, we will not allow the day to go just like that. And I believe we shook Africa. Yes, a bit. It's an online party everyone is still talking about. Even me, I've never seen it. We had about 1,400 guests. We prepared for 1,000. We had about 1,400 guests. You won't believe it. Has anyone seen Mudashiru Obasa on Instagram, please? Kindly alert me. I'm searching... Yes, this promises to be a very interesting, very pleasurable, and very educating session. What we do with our guests is to bring them online to educate our viewers about things that we probably don't know. A lot of times we assume that we know it all, but... So here we are. Let me check, as we often do, to know. Yes, I expect that a lot of people are tuning in from different parts of the world. So, we are all set now. We are all set. Let's see. Let's see. We're trying to, to see what the connection problem is about. Yes, let's have a wasiu and the king of Fuji. 
Let's have him. In the meantime, while we are trying to connect. Honorable Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly. Oh, how are you, sir? Hey, Bob D. Hey, how, how are you, sir? <laughs> Good to see you. I'm fine. How are your you? Signature, your signature card. <laughs> hey, always there. Always there. Bob Good D. to see you. Good to see you. Happy birthday. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Thank you so much. Thank no you, worry. thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate. No way, I won't forget to ask for my champion where we meet. <laughs> <laughs> I think that will love on me, so... Uh, that will love me, so... <laughs> no problem. Right, okay, yeah, we thank God, we thank God. So, our usual protocol is that we start with music. Mm -hmm. We always want our guests to relax. Just relax. We ask simple questions straightforward well, answers no problem so yeah. before i introduce you properly i would uh, play music that i'm sure you will you will enjoy I it's called war off by wasiu war off war off <laughs> Yeah, 
So good evening, Hi, right from it, Uboda Shiru Obasa. You are welcome on this program. Uh, the you, first sir. thing we do is we let our guests speak for themselves. Can you kindly introduce yourself to our viewers? We have so many people watching from all over the world, and they want to know who is Uboda Shiru Ajayi Obasa. Thank you. Well, Obasa Uboda Shiru Ajayi. Right Honorable Speaker, Lagos State House of Assembly, born 11 level 72, you know, um, attended state primary school, Oyewole, and my secondary school at Archbishop Agi Memorial Secondary School, Lhasa Magya Moshi, and last Lagos State University, where I studied law, thereafter Nigerian Law School. Well, I started. I think we are having problem with the network there, sir. Yeah. We lost you. After... Briefly, okay. I'm with you. I can see you very well. If you can hear me. Okay, I can see you. you are back now, sir. Yes, you can continue. Okay. Yeah. 1999 as a counselor in Agege, the old Agege local government. In 2000. Man, three, I joined Lagos State as of assembly, assembly representing Agege constituency 01. Since then, I've been in the Lagos State as of assembly. I became the speaker of Lagos State as of assembly in 2015 to date. Fantastic. Mary, I, I will still take Mary, off yes. uh, down memory lane. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you were born in 1972. Can you tell us yeah. what Lagos looked like at that time? Wow. Well, in 1972, Moshe, I can't really, you know, give story of how it was there. <laughs> you know, I was just born. So there's no way for me to yes. know what um, But growing up, I could remember then that um, at least uh, when I started the primary school, you know, um, then if, if you are talking about infrastructure, you know, the expectation was high then because not every street. Yeah, I was started around that time, and um, not um, many roads. Yeah, I can remember in those days when we travel promotion to Agege, then uh, most times you have to disembark somewhere we call a uh, bank in Agege and trek all the way to connect another bus. So I think if we talk about infrastructural development, I think Lagos has advanced, you know, in terms of infrastructural development compared to that period. And uh, when you talk about social life, I think social life was fun then, was great, you know, because there was kind of family, uh, deep relationship. Even your neighbors, everybody, you know, you are all family. Or like what we have today, when everybody has to lock uh, his children, you know. So I think we have more social life than what it is today. Fantastic. 
Now your primary school, tell us about your primary school. Was it a mission school or was it uh, a government school? And uh, can you remember some of your classmates, for example? Yeah, ah, long time ago. <laughs> can I really? <laughs> I just, uh, well, uh, well, I started with uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. Um, St. Thomas Aquinas, with the name suggests, as it suggests, you know, it's kind of a mission school. Then, ah, I, I remember one I would love what Charles um, Amu. Few of them I can remember. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So those are. The and then the secondary school. Wow! I ah, really want Sakatinubu Memorial High School. Agigi, you know Sakatinubu. So one of the best school there. When you talk about academic football and everything, so a lot of friends. There are so, so much of many of them are still around to today. I can remember most by Arugun that day. Uh, should go a Biodun, Janet Fire, me, uh, one Rasak Williams. Um, what's, what's so many of so Wow, and uh, <laughs> did you participate in any sports at the time? Whoa, I was a great footballer, I still play to that. <laughs> uh -huh. I knew no, your popularity must play. have come from somewhere. Ah, from football. No, no, I still play from football. football. Today. We play in our office in Lagos State House of Assembly. So I simply I enjoyed football. I love football. Are you a striker or a fullback yeah, yeah, or yeah, midfielder? Yeah, yeah. Midfielder or striker? You know, <laughs> because I love ball juggling, you know, dribbling and all of that. So. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you. So I know that you are eager to talk politics because you joined politics <laughs> very early. What prompted you into politics? Well, I think, you know, a kind of discussion between our parents then, you know, uh, my father, my uncle, and the rest of them, you know, most times in the evening, they discuss about politics. And the usual name that prompts up when in their discussion there was Awolo, Awolo, Awolo. And I was wondering, who is this Awolo? What about this Awolo? So it was there that I catch the bomb that, okay, me too, I want to be like this, I know people have been talking about, at least, you know, they talk a lot about the man, so that was where it started from. Okay. I know that you started from the grassroots, so what does it take to navigate through the grassroots, especially in, in a very, very uh, densely populated state like Lagos? Oh, well, it's about relationship. I think politics is all about relationship. You know, you must have very solid, solid relationship with your people, with your constituency. You know, support with the fathers. You know, I grew up in that community. So many people that we have started uh, as schoolmates, as friends, brothers, and also. So that's contributed a lot to the popularity I enjoy. And sustaining such relationship is very, very crucial. So with most of them, those that we went to the same school, those that we grew up in the same community, I still ensure that we relate, you know, reaching out to some of them. So very your early. very first election, how did it happen? Your very first well, election. Well, as a counselor. As a well, counselor. <laughs> you know, before I became the counselor, you know, I've always been part of the system, I mean, political circle, in political circle, and I've contributed immensely. You know, our own desire then was to deliver, I mean, to ensure victory within our community. No, no, it wasn't because of what we want to gain at the end of the day. I have, you know, some friends of my age group that we were all involved. So our desire was to deliver every time that, you know, we enjoy that, you know, confidence that we are in charge of this community. You know, that was how it started. So when we returned to uh, democracy in 1999, and uh, we formed another party, which was AD, and we were sharing offices. We all sat together, we were sharing. Everybody was speaking to me, and they asked me, oh, Abasa, what do you want? Do you want me? I said, no, I don't want anything. I don't want to be party officer. You know, before then, I've been party officer in the past. I was a sonar chairman. I was a ward school. I was campaign chairman also. So and I told them, no, I don't want anything. I just want to be counselor. And they looked at each other. And they all agreed immediately, okay, 
you are given the ticket. So that was how I got the ticket. But, you know, like in, um, we had uh, one Judas in the disciple of Jesus. So <laughs> a day or two days later, some group turned against it. I know somebody else is interested, was interested, and that was, uh, and we thank God, I emerged at the end of the day. So from there. Wow. And then you said for you, it was about delivery. And you've yeah. been delivering ever since. Yeah, I love it. I can yeah. see you've been in uh, the progressive camp. Always. So was it the Awoist the, the influence that you mentioned? Yeah. Wow. Okay, so after counselorship, how did you move to the next level? Well, we were still in the council then as a counselor. And, you know, the tenor was coming to end. And I beckoned on one of our uh, supporters in Agege. And I asked her, please, can you conduct kind of uh, survey on my interest if it will be possible for me to go to House of Assembly? So I sent the woman on errand. And she came back with, you know, um, positive response that uh, it seems people are interested in you and people are going, to, uh, are going to give you that support. And that was all. So that was how it started. Mm, and the election, the primary election came out at the airport hotel. You know, <clears throat> we were five or six contestants. And we had about uh, maybe five, but we had six delegates. Yes, yeah, six delegates, five contestants. And I had three votes. I had three people killed in front of me. The next person had two, and another person had three. You know, wow. suddenly the man that uh, had one, that voted for the man that had one, moved to the person that had two and became three, three. So I had a, the other person also had the, I, you know, thank God for Ashura Dibola and men. May Almighty Allah continue to sustain him. You know, he was there and he just rose. And came to us that you can't do that. If you not in she went to bad the boy like Golu, she might find Golu. I want to go and cool bed. The Jagaban. That's a great Jagaban. That if it were to be a ballot box, are you going to break the ballot box and retrieve your votes and recast it again? And that was the that was how it started. So we faced the general election, we won, and today from then to now. I, I can see that you have been, you just mentioned the Jagaban, the Ashwaju now. I can see that you have been fiercely loyal to him. What, what is it about the, about the man that a lot of politicians are ready to die for him? Uh, well, this man is a great man. You know, he's a man that has that passion for others to grow and develop. You know, this is a man that um, no matter what, no matter what he has given to you, he has done, he would not intervene in your affairs or in the manner you control your structure. You know, and he has always been there. He has always been there. He listens, you know, he's a listening leader and he, he, he's always just, and you know, and he doesn't abandon his followers, his loyalists. No, he would never abandon you. So why do you want to betray such a man? So I don't have choice. If you look at what I said from 2003, if not for him then, I can tell you the tickets will have gone to somebody else. The tickets wow. will have gone to somebody else. And since then, so you can't just easily forget such things. So, but there are those who say they don't want godfathers, that the godfather is him, they are not... There is not father everywhere. Even in our household, we still play Godfatherism. Even for us to have come to this world, you know, when our parents were having the affairs, according to biology, they said you have 1,000 plus sperms swimming and one emerged out of the 1,000. So what do we call that? <laughs> Biology. <laughs> so what the, do you call that? The you know, speaker. Godfather is in people. And it has been helpful, you know, to Lagos. If you compare other states with what we are seeing in Lagos, 
you will agree with me that without this man being at the top of political affairs in Lagos State, I can tell you that we won't have it nice here in Lagos the way it is today. Because, you know, there's control, there's respect, and there's guidance, there's direction. So we need this in politics positively. Positively, and he has been doing that. So, like I told somebody, we are all product of uh, imposition. Somebody will say they impose it, they impose it, they impose it. Tell me somebody who is a politician and uh, who has been with us in Lagos that has not been imposed at one time or the other. But I'm telling you, it's being done positively. They will consider your popularity, what you can contribute before some taking decision. And most times, they allow your people from your community to decide. Like an example that I've just gave now that he, at the airport hotel, we were allowed. So, but at times people will misconstrue the good intention and start saying things negatively. But for me, I think we should give it to that man and we should continue to pray for him. That is Ashura development, you know. There are godfathers and there are godfathers. I'm very interested in this. Yeah. How has Ashwa do managed? I haven't seen any other godfather in Nigeria. Every state, like you said, every, everywhere, even in America, Obama had godfathers, the Kennedys, and, and so on. So, but how has he managed to win election after election? Can you, I want you to be specific about what it entails, because it can't just be about him just saying, go left, go right. There must be something. Well, this uh, we are talking about a strategist, somebody that knows his onion, and this is a man that is always available, day, night, midnight. You can always access Ashiwaju, and this is a man that is so generous, so generous to inform, is ready to give anything, and it's so difficult to deny such a man when he asks for something. So, I think all these have played prominent role in sustaining victory in Lagos states. And that is why you see people in the election, we ensure we deliver within our local government consistency. So that is just it. So I think we should give it to that man. You know, this is a man that has relationship with every single And I'm sure you yourself can confirm that. You talk about journalists, you talk about this, you talk about bankers, you talk about lawyers, you talk about this. He has a very, you know, in good faith with almost everybody. So that's, you know, is, makes it easy when it comes to election for him to talk to people. And he's a bridge builder who says, you know, his goodness and his, um, uh, his love to others from other parts of the world. Now, is it true that Lagos has a master plan? A lot of people have asked me that is it true that Lagos has a master plan? And could you let us into this master plan? What is the plan for Lagos as a mega city? Well, well yeah, that is true. And I think this came up during the era of Ashwa Jibola Amen Tinobu as a governor. And that is what every other who have come on, on board have been following. So it's all about infrastructural development. Now, how do we plan Lagos in the next 2020? Now we are now in 2020. So we'll be thinking about 2040. In terms of road, we are not talking about Fort Main Land Bridge. We are talking about coastal road. We are talking about so many things, you know, in order to elevate the standard of Lagos to any developed world we can think of. So we are dreaming of Lagos that we compete with city of Paris, city of London, and everywhere you can think of. And that is what we are doing. And that is what this plan is all about. And you see, in achieving this, the great man during his era, when he came on board, the revenue of Lagos State was around 500 million, 600 million. And with his capability and ability, he was able to move it up to 7 billion at the time he left. Since then, the successive administration have been building on this, on this, on this. Because without fund, there's no way you can plan and there's no way you can achieve your plan. So this, I think, we are going to achieve, but it's going to be gradual. Before you became speaker, 
of course you are a floor member of can you course. tell us yes yeah, some of the bills sponsored by you or some of your activities that you think are memorable yeah when i came in, in 2003 i was a chairman as committee rural developments uh then uh, later on i became chairman as committee public accounts committee thereafter chairman as committee economic planning and budgets before i became a speaker well i have list of them list 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 of motions and laws and everything well, let me do well, the first one I did, that was 19 July 2000, well, I think that was 2007. It says, and breakdown of law and other attacking game motor pass. I think that was the time there was great um, problems among the NRTW, you know, which was disturbing the society, the community. Then that was uh, Then our, you know, where the release of with a local government funds of Lagos State. I'm sure you, you remember that during uh she for passengers and uh, you know the confrontation between ambassador and lagos states then it's also the need to construct affordable market for rents and not for say by relevant government agency to discourage street trading that was uh, also in 2007 the uh, presentation of quarterly report of committee on public account local government and let me add this you know I happen to be the pioneer chairman of public account committee, local, local, because both state and local were joined together before my imagine as the as the chairman of uh, public account committee chairman. But also, we had the need to repeal National Inland Waterway Act 2008, which paved way for the establishment of Lagos State Waterways Authority last year. That's what that was in 2008. And uh, we call for national. yes, we have called for National Assembly to initiate process of imposing constitutional sanction on well, <laughs> that word seems to be controversial for abandoning his duty post without complying with the constitution. You could remember when the president was sick, and not that, yes. and that, yeah. So let me, I mean, the bills. Well, Community Development Association B 2007, appropriation B, where since I was the chairman, local government administration law amendments 2015, Lagos State Neighborhood Safety Court Law 2016, Kidnapping Prohibition Law 2017, yes. Lagos State Cancer Research Institute 2017, Yoruba Language Promotion and Preservation Law. 2018 and Lagos State House of Assembly Service Commission Amendment Law 2018. Yeah, 2018. So these are the bill sponsors, and we have a list of them. First of three and now, uh, in the introduction, I mentioned that the Lagos State House of Assembly is probably the biggest parliament in Africa. I mean, in terms of everything, uh, okay. Lagos is a very, very important. It's like the California of America mm -hmm. you know, when you talk about Lagos. So what is the primary role apart from legislation? You are supposed to have checks and balances with whoever is the chief executive of the state. And how has that been since you have been since you have been in, in, in the house? Well, I think uh, well, if you talk about the function of a legislator, the paramount one is representation. So the representation is quite important when you are representing people, which means their affairs is the most important thing to you. And uh, that is just that. Uh, when we talk about representation, you must understand and know what they lack, what they want, and how to protect their interests. Mm -hmm. Even, even if, if the constituent is an armed robber, you still have to show interest in his case until the courts uh, uh, decide otherwise. Uh, well, check and balances. I think you know the 
the genesis of check and balances is, is um, something that was deliberately couched so that there won't be friendship between the legislature and the executive. Because there is no way you'll be on top of your job in checking the other arms of government that there will be cordial relationship. That was, if you look at the genesis, you know, uh, confirms Aristotle's and this other, confirms the separation of powers and this. So it was something that happened and that um, brought the need to check the king. You know, monarchical system was what was training. So that the essence of the king was noticed and uh, that people came together to checkmate. So there's no way we look at this that we have friendship. But we must be able to balance it. We must, you know, because if, you, if we lack cordial relationship between the two arms, then there won't be development. Where there's crisis, there's no way you can record development. So for us in Lagos State House of Assembly, we develop relationship, we put relationship first. And that does not mean we close our eyes to something we believe should not be done. And I can give instances, you know, during the uh, um, administration of Governor Ambody, uh, Governor Ambody, you know, uh, when Fisher's, uh, what, Fisher's came, I think it's Fisher's came, came up, you know, the house, you know, stood against it, not because we were against Ambody, but we thought uh, there's no way we could use our own money, you know, to empower an investor. Why we now wait till some period before we recoup our money? You know, all the equipment were purchased by the ISPO issued by the state, like that. And even the buses, we had reservation that Lagos has gone beyond this. And now what we do is to guarantee, you know, the operators in the bank that the fund will be whatever loan that is given will be repaid. So we can't continue like what we did since 1979 up today, where we purchase buses and we start looking out. No, 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 no. You know, that was our position. So at times we have, you know, uh, differences of policies introduced by executive. But that does not suggest that we are against executive. But we still have to. Our own main assignment is to protect the people. And in protecting the people, it goes into talking about protecting the fund of the state, protecting assets of the state, and so many other things. Well, before we continue, let me say uh, I'm observing that the Instagram is on fire tonight. Uh, you have a <laughs> lot of die-hard supporters, and you also have a lot of daredevil <laughs> enemies who are ready to die on this <laughs> so I'm reading some of the comments. In, in fact, it's it's unbelievable. Uh, yes, I can see one of them even abusing me now, the chief cleaner. Well, that's my job. If you, <laughs> there is dignity in labor if you call me chief yeah. cleaner for asking simple questions. You see, the thing about politics is that there is no way you get involved in politics and you can be all right. Some people will like you. Some people. So before we continue, we'll, we'll play some music, then we'll go to the next set of questions. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I think this is from Papa for this thing. I don't think that. <laughs> I'm 
We rock Baba Collinton in those good old days. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Now, the next question. What is the role of cash in politics? It seems poor people cannot <laughs> do politics. Wow. If you remember hmm. that your book, Oh, very well. Yeah, yeah. It's just simple. You know, you have to print posters. You have to print posters. You have to make adverts. You have to do a lot of things. You have to recruit people. So you need money. Without money, there's no way you can run your campaign. So money is very significant in the election. So except we want to deceive ourselves. So it is not possible for you to run at least. You are also an aspirant, presidential aspirant. You know, better, you know better than I do. When my when my mates were seeing the <laughs> delegates, me I was distributing copies of Ovation magazine to them. <laughs> <laughs> they will tell you oh, oh, no, oh, no, yeah. Ever for you. <laughs> wow. But yeah. is that what makes it difficult for a politician not to find a way to recoup his money. Does that put pressure? Does does it not put pressure on politicians when they get it does. power? It does, seriously. It, it does. It does, seriously. It does. So, because there's you no know way you can help it. Okay, let me share an experience with you. When I was a councillor, Ashif Adjibosu was the chairman. So we had 11 wards then. So I think the man was trying you know, to put one project in each ward. So in my own case, I struggled, you know, I struggled and I got drainage. And so I was happy, you know, I was flaunting in. Hey. So as I was going, at least one of the elderly people there called me and I stopped by, ah, where well does how are you? So I said, ah, honorable. We don't see your hand, you. I say, what do you mean? I look at the drain. We have just done this. He said, is that what? <laughs> huh. Am I going to stop drain? Am I... <laughs> so, you know, it's terrible. And most times it's painful when you struggle to put some things in place. So people will appreciate something that will be useful for the community as a whole. But they don't show appreciation. You know, everybody is interested in what he or she is going to put in his or her pockets. So that is just the situation. There's no other way to it. So the importance of money cannot be neglected at all. It's not possible. So now, just... you are a second time speaker. Yes, uh, sir. If I'm, I'm leading this somewhere. I can see a lot of people are waiting uh, to hear some things from you. We will get there, but I will not be distracted no and I will not be rushed. So I'm going somewhere. So yeah. the right honorable speaker, uh, what would you call the achievements of the house under your leadership so far? Wow. At least now you spent about five years. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you need to consider achievements. You first ask yourself what is supposed to be the responsibility of the house. I mentioned one. And the second one is making law, where you make law for the benefits and growth of the state. Definitely, you have contributed a lot, you know, contributed a lot. And there's no way an executive arm of government will survive without strong support of the legislature. Because for everything, starting from budgetary provision, so which has to come to the house for the approval of the 
of the of the parliament. So this is one of the achievements. And we just talk about kidnapping law now. You know, when the rate of kidnapping was high in Lagos State, you know, we came up with that. And I think immediately the rates subsided. And so many states, you know, also copied the law from us. And in improving security, that was when we also introduced neighborhood safety court, which has now been amended to add Amoteku. So these are the achievements we have made on the part. Um, MDAs, so many MDAs have been created through laws so to develop in our state and to increase government's revenue. So all this we have done. And when you talk about laws and infrastructurally, we have continued to improve the infrastructure in this uh, House of Assembly. And that's, if you go to the House of Assembly today, you will see that construction is still ongoing. Then, human development. You know, day in, day out, we have continued to train our members and staff, members of staff of local state assembly within and outside the country. And that's why we are number one uh, legislature in Nigeria. Hmm. Now, there are people who are saying, well, maybe they are not aware of the role of a legislator. Uh, they are saying you have not been kind to your people in Nagege. How do you respond to them? <laughs> yes, they are angry that you have not been good to them. I don't, I, I don't want to talk about that. I just don't want to talk about it. Is Agege called Obasa forgets? <laughs> My people in Nagege, they will never deny me. That's, I'm very sure. Come, when you talk about infrastructural development, Agege is almost becoming, where do we, let's say, lucky in terms of, as we speak, I cannot even count the number of roads that have been tagged in Agege. And the greatest one among them, the Penn Cinema Bridge, which the executive promises will be finished by, completed by May. Unfortunately, C-19 has not stayed. And they are still working on. I know, I'm sure if you know Penn Cinema very well, you just look for Penn Cinema and look at the bridge. Very massive one. Very massive bridge in Agege. Very so Agege will surpass Ikeja. You see, with great infrastructure, you know, it's going on in Agege. I can't count the number of words we have now. And when you talk about employment, Mel, Bob D, I can't even count the number, the number of those youth that have gained employment, I can't. Empowerment, I don't want to talk about that. My people in Agege will always speak for me on that, I'm sure, and they know it's... <laughs> well... I am familiar with African politics, and I know that, yes, you are very excited about infrastructure and all that. But what about stomach infrastructure? Well, I think that's what they are complaining about. They, nobody can complain. I, I'm telling you, Bob D, I know what I'm talking about. Want to undo stomach, whatever infrastructure, you are talking about empowerment. I've just said it. I cannot count number of people that have gained employment through me in Nagege. And those who have empowered on their own monetarily that take, take this and do this, take this and do this, I can't even count. I can't even count. And even at the verge of the COVID-19, uh -uh, we play prominent role. Yeah? We play for almost first two weeks. You know, we were giving out bread on daily basis for breakfast. We started they said the bread was too small. They said the bread was uh, too small. It, well, it's possible. It's possible, but we did make 30 something. I have 11 word, and we started with 2,000 per word, with addition, almost 30,000 bread, first day. Subsequently, we reduced it to 1,000, you know, 100, 100, 1,000 plus, 13 words, 10,000 plus. Like that to the end. See, couple with rice, bag of rice, financial support, come. And we have pictures. We have pictures to support that. Even up to now, but we don't talk like that in Ramadan period where you do something, you don't just mention it. Come when it comes to Agege, you know, you have just said it. Everybody cannot like you. Everybody cannot love you. But I can assure you, any Nagege we are in the majority. 
turn election tomorrow, inshallah, 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 we will deliver in Nigeria. That I'm very confident. Wow. You it's know, when... I'm not posting, you know, but I'm just telling you what is, you know, it is in Nagege and what will happen any day, any time. I'm very, very sure of that. Well, I'm only giving you a feedback based on what I'm reading on. Yeah, a lot of, yeah, there are a lot of, a lot of write-ups coming up. But I can also yeah. see the viewership also climbing. You are, you are, you are a very popular politician, obviously, for us to have so many people online. Now, the next thing is the crux of the matter because we have just a few minutes to go now. So I was yeah. probably the best for the last. Let's go, dear. Yeah. So to there are all people. kinds of allegations against you that you are just spending billions Government. and spending money like rainwater. What is the Yay. truth about this? Me <laughs> not <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bob D, is, I'm very happy about this question. I said something when we started. I, I was a chairman of the committee on rural. And thank God, Dr. Kasali, who was the commissioner, is still alive today. I became a chairman of the committee on PAC. And we, are, we still have 57 local government. And most of the chairmen then, they are still around. And uh, Akabuizi, who was the commissioner for economic planning, is still so much around. Patrick Lavo was governor, is so much around. And body and the current. Come, any of them, any day, any those people I've just mentioned cannot, for once, link anything to me that Obasa, when he was a commissioner, he has done this, he has done that. No, I'm saying it openly now, so people can hear. And these people are alive. Probably they are watching. Among the allegations they have raised, come, the issue of Obasa stole money. He spent money. He spent money. Come, what is the purpose of money? Is it not to spend? But the question, how did you spend this money? Do you have budgetary provision? For the money you have expended, yes, training, seminar, are they not part of budgets? Um, what what do we call it? Um, festival and all sorts. Well, that which you have parties. They they allege uh, we use two hundred and something million to print invitation. Is that possible? I don't even think Dangote Dangote will ever do such a stupid thing. Using 200 and something million to print invitation card when the total budget for the program was 61 million naira. <laughs> 61 million naira. So, where are you going to get the balance to support your, uh, uh, what do they call it, uh, 200 and something million to, to, to print invitation card? You see, at times, it's, you find it so disturbing that some people you believe should be enlightened, educated, will be saying something that cannot be established or substantiated. How will somebody use 200 or something million? There was a provision in the budget and it followed due process and notable people attended the program. The first lady was there. The first lady of Lagos was there. Our royal fathers, they were there. We invited uh, a man of God. The children, they had their own party. We had our own. So where? They said the you spent of... billions on buying cars for yourself. Right. That is very important. Thank you. You see, when you want to be mischievous, is for you to concoct some story. We had eight assembly. Eight assembly. We are now in ninth assembly. In the eighth assembly, the members were entitled to, to official cars. Isn't it? Because of the issue there between Ambo Day and the house, the fund was uh, delivered late to the house. But at the end of the day, towards the end of eighth assembly, we purchased 40, what is it called, for all the members. And they are still alive, one of them. So the question is, do we have provision in the budget to purchase vehicles? Which we did. The, the expenditure followed due process, procurement, and every other thing. It did. So what is the question in biker? If only that we collected money and we did not purchase the vehicles, now that, that can be something else. Or I think Wadeli, you know, uh, went away with the 40 vehicles. No, everybody collected his own car and they are still alive. The ninth assembly came. 
Are you saying for the fact that those in Ninth Assembly collect official hours, the new members in Ninth Assembly will not collect their own? Is it possible? And the Ninth Assembly, they got their official cards by six, after six months in office. But because some people are just mischievous, you now combine everything, the Eighth Assembly and Ninth Assembly together, that purchase two billion, do this, do this. It doesn't make sense. The, the procurement is there, the procurement office is there, their website is there, you can Google the website and cross check. And we have documents to buttress that. Uh, this, okay, this document for this the procurement, these are those who are entitled. Even in this case, the speaker cannot even sign a loan. Because the threshold of the speaker is almost 100 million. Anything that goes beyond 100 million, you cannot sign. Other people must join you, I mean, members of financial committee, they must all join you. Look at this, the list of the members. Yeah. Honorable Basa, Honorable Abdimo, Olowo, Fafumi, Setonji, and they all sign. This, 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 this so, so then how are you able to get the billions that is being alleged? But about a billion. <laughs> yes, yeah, I mean, billion, I, I, billion. I'm just, I'm just reporting yeah, back, as right. I said, this is not from me. I'm reading yeah, what I'm, people are writing, that you are spending where, money anyhow. Where, how can you spend government money anyhow? Does it make sense? Is the clerk a stupid man? The officials, are they stupid? The auditor, are they stupid? Are they not going to cross-check what you have been doing? And no, no, are they are saying maybe you are sharing it together. Sharing what? What do you want to share? I have challenged those who are behind this that, okay, come and prove your points. I've challenged them repeatedly. If you can trace any money from government accounts to my account, save for statutory. Statutory. I'm entitled to salary. I'm entitled to impress and other allowances. Nothing, purely nothing. They talked about my wife. Okay, come and prove it that my wife is collecting. Bring the facture, bring the accounts. This is just blackmail. It's not political. You know, some people are, you know, they have intention of, you know, chasing out the speaker from office. But it's constitutional. To remove the speaker is constitutional, it's allowed. But there's a process. Come to the house and follow the process, not through blackmailing. How can you stay somewhere and say, okay, why is it that it was after we suspended and removed some of our brothers that this thing started? Why? Yeah, I was going to that. That is also why? the allegation. They said you have yeah. been dictatorial, that you are sacking those who are not supporting you and you are not giving <laughs> them back their original <laughs> positions and all that. How would I, Bob uh, D, impeachment is democratic. Is it not? To impeach somebody, is it not? Lana of Brazil was removed, isn't it? She was removed. Um, Ete of our own house of red was removed. So, what is an offense in that? You know, parliament is all about number, and you are all first among the equal. You cannot impose yourself on anybody. If the members tomorrow Decide that Obasa, we have had enough of you. That will be the end. There's no way you can strangle them. It's not possible. We have seen it in other states. We've seen it in Edo. We've seen it in Nikiti. We've seen it in Ogo. We've seen it everywhere. When they are ready to remove the speaker, nobody can stop them. But we must not sacrifice discipline just because of sentiment of polity. No, discipline is very key in every institution. Even your own organization, if you find one of your uh, employees, uh, what, what, what is it called? What are you going to do? I'm not going to take action. Nobody should consider himself or herself to be too big for an institution. I have been in the House of Assembly since 2003. There is no assembly that we have not removed somebody. In 2003, Pailumi was removed midway and Ikuforiji came on board. Teji Osho was also removed. Uh, Baba Foshe was removed. So many other people were removed from office. Aduba from Mekpe was also removed. So why is it becoming an issue now? But because some people believe that they are untouchable. That nobody can touch them. And they say, these people, they are my brothers, they are my friends. In that assembly, they call the shots. In that assembly. 
But for the fact that, you know, I, all of them and everybody, they are all my brother, but we must realize that the speaker is speaker. And Obasa is the speaker today. Inshallah, inshallah. Are you, are you willing to reconcile with we have reconciled some of these already. people? We have reconciled. They have returned. You know, we suspended them. We have lifted suspension and we have made them chairman of various committee. What uh, reconciliation do we want now? Okay, we should go and remove those who have been put there now because we are reconciling. Would that bring peace? Would that bring peace? You know, you, well, know, you should learn how to give up. You should learn how. Why do you want to destroy the house? Because the equation is not in your support. That shows that you don't have the love of that house. When a speaker was removed, he took it in good faith. A deputy speaker was removed. He, she took it in good faith. But now you are now flying documents all about. Uh, the question is, why did we suspend them and remove them? Is because it true that the party asked you to return them? I have returned them. I suspended them. Uh, maybe to their original position. No, 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 nothing like that. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. Nothing, nothing, not absolutely nothing like that. Nothing. We have returned them. We have returned them. I've made them chairman. All this remove, 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 remove. There must be something very juicy about your office. Can you <laughs> be frank and tell even us my own office, how even powerful my own office. is your office in, in, in reality? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the speaker office is just like any ordinary office. You hmm. know, it has responsibility. And the speaker has to discharge, you know, those responsibilities. So it's like, man, you know, on five job, you have to act your, perform your legislative role. Uh, you have to perform your administrative role. You have to perform that political role as well. And you have to play that uh, social role. And you have to perform the family role. So it's like a man doing five jobs together. So it depends uh -huh. on how each person consider it or look at it. But for me, uh -huh. I do not see myself as being powerful. Because, you know, as a speaker, you are not the boss. The day you consider yourself to be the boss, that surely will be the end of the speaker. But because you are first among the good ones, anybody can become speaker. Anybody among the members. Only that they have chosen you to lead them. That is all. Unlike the governor who owns the cabinet. You know, the governor can do this and the cabinet can do but I can't do that. I still have to seek for their collaboration and understanding in every decision. And there's no decision, no decision, even purchase of these vehicles and the seminars and everything that we did not discuss together at the parliamentary meeting. No, there's no decision. I'm saying it openly that I've taken without the concurrence of all the members. Okay. Now, some are saying that you had friends who also supported you in the past. That what's your relationship with them? That they, some of them are fighting you. So why do you think they are fighting you? <laughs> well, friends, fine. I don't know the friends you are talking about, but I respect relationships so much. No, I don't want to mention it yeah. deliberately. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to. I respect relationship so much. I guide relationship jealously. So for me, I don't think I will fight any of my friends. Even the past members who have passed through the House of Assembly, we still relate and we still, you know, cordially interact. So I have no problem with any of my friends. But as I've said, the speaker is the speaker. And today, Obasa is the speaker, inshallah. So, yeah, yeah, you seem to be a very tough man. You look gentle, but you seem to yeah, be very tough at the same time. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a gentle man. <laughs> you know, I hardly speak. If not for this conversation, people do say, does he speak? Does he talk? I don't talk. I don't go out. Home, office, office, home. Home, office, except when there's a function. I such function, it must be somebody very close to me. You know, our associate. Like the bad day we came for last time. Yeah. Your brother said, yeah. Yeah, it's so a good I ball. don't go. Yeah. I don't, I, you know, outside the office, I don't do anything. So I'm not tough, but one, for me, 
when I have to take decision, I do it. You know, I do it passionately. Because, you know, that's one of the qualities of leadership. Because if you don't have, if you have to take decision and you're afraid to do that, and something else happens, then you'll be responsible. So well, we, well, have well. 40 members. Uh, <laughs> we have 40 members in the House of Assembly. There's no way you can get all the majority of them to be on your side. They must see something in you. You have just said, I was speaker in the 8th Assembly. I'm now speaker in the 9th Assembly. I can't. There's no way you can force them to do that. So you have relationship, but as I've said, okay, let me give you another example. This guy granted an interview of recent, uh, Desmond. When he came in, he did something that we had reservation about. We set up committee. In fact, the committee was headed by Honorable Abiru. And we sanctioned him, he apologized, we warned him. He's the member of the house. He cannot close our eyes to discipline. It's not possible. Why should people who are supposed to be the senior ranking members be responsible for documents and all sorts? Confrontation at the parliamentary meeting. No, 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 we don't want to talk about that because we love peace, everybody wants peace. And we thank God there's peace in Lagos State as of Assembly. We had our sitting on Monday. We had our sitting on Monday. We have started something on ground. And we have been conducting sitting peacefully. So I... Well, oh, it's well. for people to jump. <laughs> if I'm a gentleman, but I know I'm a very quiet person. The, the right honorable speaker, I Sir. think uh, we have come to the end. But before I go, I must make some observations. Uh, your enemies expect me to find you guilty i'm not a judge <laughs> i'm reading i'm reading them uh, okay they, they've asked how much you've paid me for this and all that i think the last time i saw you was in january at the okoyas if i yes, remember yes, correctly yes, yes, that's yes, the last yes, time yes, i, I yes, saw you yes. but it doesn't matter i'm not trying to defend myself <laughs> there's nothing to defend now yeah. all the questions they've asked me to ask you i have asked so whosoever is not pleased with that i suggest that they will have to find other means let me quickly thank add, you add, add, let me quickly add this. <laughs> if they are interested to see our books they can come they can come to the house of assembly we will open it there's nothing hidden if they are interested at least they've seen it already but they are manipulating it, using it negatively. But if they are interested, let them come. We will show them. We show well, them. as I said, the, the media can never be the judge in any case. Yes. So uh, our duty is to interview when there are issues like this. And all the questions they sent, some sent ahead, some are just writing and I'm reading them. I've asked, and even if you go to court, the judge will still ask you questions. questions. On yes. this note, I want to thank you for honoring me. Is it because people asked on this program that they wanted to see Obasa? And I've brought <laughs> Obasa to them. I can see some people are very happy and I can see a few people are unhappy. It's normal. And on that note, I'll play you Ebenezer Ube, Kusabonto Liga, and then we'll close it. Thank you, sir. <laughs>
Baba Commander has said it all. Uh, 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 you can't please everybody, but yeah. I am very, very happy that you came on this program, and I hope Thank you, sir. Uh, if we have the chance, another time, you would answer us. Thank you, Mr. Thank Speaker. You. My warmest regards to your family. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you my brother. Keep my cake. Thank you. I'll ask for you. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Uh, you. Do take care. <laughs> yes, thank you.